Conan, known as Conan the Barbarian and Conan the Sumerian, from the name of his homeland, Sumeria, is a literary character created by Robert Howard in a series of stories published in Weird Tales during the 1930s. Conan is a Sumerian, a barbarian of the far north. He was born on a battlefield and is the son of the village blacksmith Corin. During the battle in Sumeria, his mother Gresham was fatally wounded by an enemy while attempting to save her husband. The weakened Gresham uses the last of her strength to give birth to her son and names him Conan before dying. He grew up quickly, by age 15 he was already a respected warrior, participating in the destruction of the Aquilonian outpost of Venarium. After this, he was struck by wanderlust. Beginning the colorful and exciting adventures chronicled by Howard and others, encountering various fabulous monsters, evil wizards, and beautiful princesses, he has traveled throughout the world and been a thief and outlaw, a mercenary and commander of a mercenary company, and a pirate. He begins building larger units of men, aiming for greater territorial ambitions, though his efforts are repeatedly thwarted, usually by the total massacre of his force excepting himself. But in his forties, he finally succeeds in becoming king of Aquilonia, the most powerful kingdom of the age. Having strangled the previous ruler, Numidides, on the steps of his own throne. In his sixties, Conan leaves his country, never to return, to seek new battles in the uncharted west, leaving his son by Queen Zenobia, a former Nemedian slave girl, to rule Aquilonia in his stead. Although Conan's adventures often result in him performing heroic feats, his motive is more than often his own survival, enrichment, or rise to power and he thus displays many of the characteristics of an anti-hero. There are several characters who bear the name Conan in Irish mythology, most notably Conan Mac Morna, also known as Conan Mael, the Bald, a member of the Fianna and an ally of Finn Mac Cumhale. While uncommon, this name is still used in Ireland. Its etymology is ambiguous. Some sources, example, Irish baby boy names, say it is the diminutive of Con or Ku, hence, Conan would mean, little hound, or, little warrior. Conan is darkly tanned, has, sullen, or, smoldering, blue eyes. A, mane, of long black hair, and is scarred, Howard mentions most often the scarring on his face. Contrary to many modern illustrations, Conan is hairy. So formidable was his appearance, naked but for short leather breeks and sleeveless shirt, open to reveal his great, hairy chest. With his huge limbs and his blue eyes blazing under his tangled black mane, he is exceptionally tall and strong. Howard is never explicit in his stories, but in a letter to P. Schuyler Miller he wrote. At Venarium he was already a formidable antagonist, though only fifteen. He stood six feet, 1.83 m, and weighed 180 pounds, 82 kilograms, though he lacked much of having his full growth. Conan's height and weight as an adult are subject to speculation, some estimates make him 6 feet 6 inches, 1.98 meters, and up to 250 pounds, 113 kilograms, but extrapolating the growth of the 15-year-old Conan based on modern data would make him at least 6 feet 2 inches, 1.88 meters, and 215 pounds, 98 kilograms, at 18. This tallies with a comment Howard wrote in another letter, that his crusader character Cormac Fitzgeoffrey is a double of Conan and that Cormac is 6 feet 2 inches and 215 pounds. It is also of note that the blade of Conan's sword is described as being 5 feet long. Likely making for a 6 foot sword including the grip, in the earlier story, the Scarlet Citadel. He uses it with one hand as well as both hands with ease, therefore it is possible that Howard imagined him quite taller at the character's beginning. Or simply he used different swords during his adventures. In Howard's tales no human is ever described as stronger than Conan, although several are mentioned as taller, such as the Strangler Baltir. Although Conan is muscular, Howard frequently compares his silence. Suppleness, agility, and way of moving to that of a panther, for instance, the servants of Bityakin, Jewels of Gwalar, Beyond the Black River, or Rogues in the House, or another feline. He moved with the supple ease of a great tiger. His steely muscles rippling under his brown skin. His garb is very often a loincloth or breeches and sandals, 
and his weapon a sword of some description, depending on his fortunes and location. He had discarded his torn tunic. And walked through the night naked except for a loincloth and his high-strapped sandals. His only garment was a pair of short red silk breeks, and his sandals were slung to his back, out of his way, as were his sword and dagger. Sometimes he wears more. The man in the boat was a picturesque figure. A crimson scarf was knotted about his head, his wide silk breeches, of flaming hue, were upheld by a broad sash, which likewise supported a scimitar in a shagreen scabbard. His gilt-worked leather boots suggested the horseman rather than the seaman, but he handled his boat with skill. Through his widely open white silk shirt showed his broad, muscular breast, burned brown by the sun, the stranger was clad like himself in regard to boots and breeks, though the latter were of silk instead of leather. But he wore a sleeveless hauberk of dark mesh mail in place of a tunic, and a helmet perched on his black mane. That helmet held the other's gaze, it was without a crest. But adorned by short bull's horns. During his reign as king of Aquilonia, Conan was. A tall man, mightily shouldered and deep of chest, with a massive corded neck and heavily muscled limbs. He was clad in silk and velvet. With the royal lions of Aquilonia worked in gold upon his rich jupon, and the crown of Aquilonia shone on his square-cut black mane, but the great sword at his side seemed more natural to him than the regal accoutrements. His brow was low and broad. His eyes a volcanic blue that smoldered as if with some inner fire. His dark, scarred, almost sinister face was that of a fighting man, and his velvet garments could not conceal the hard, dangerous lines of his limbs. He loses none of his vigor with age with the above description coming when he is in his mid-forties. Though several later authors have referred to Conan as Germanic-looking, Howard imagined the Sumerians as a proto-Celtic people with mostly dark hair and blue or gray eyes. Racially the Sumerians to which Conan belongs are descendants of the Atlanteans, though they do not remember their ancestry. In his pseudo-historical essay, The Hyborian Age, Howard describes how the people of Atlantis, the land where his character cult originated, had to move east after a great cataclysm changed the face of the world and sank their island, settling where northern Scotland and Norway would eventually be located. Howard also described how the Sumerians eventually moved south and east after the age of Conan. Conan is a loyal friend to those true to him with a barbaric code of honor and chivalry, which often marks him as more civilized than those more sophisticated people he meets in his travels. Indeed his straightforward nature and barbarism are constants in all the tales. He doesn't hesitate to help damsels in distress and avoids violence against women. He never lies and is often brutally honest, regardless of consequences, even with all his power and leadership skills. He avoids temptation to build his own empire or suppress others. Let others dream imperial dreams. I but wish to hold what is mine. I have no desire to rule an empire welded together by blood and fire. It's one thing to seize a throne with the aid of its subjects and rule them with their consent. It's another to subjugate a foreign realm and rule it by fear. He was no more monogamous in his nature than the average soldier of fortune, but there was an innate decency about him, that prevented him from indulging into sexual perversions, despite his brutish appearance. Conan uses his brain as well as his brawn. The Sumerian is a talented fighter who overpowers most men with his strength and skill. Also, his endurance allows him to fight with unfailing ferocity long after most would have collapsed in exhaustion. Due to his travels abroad, he also has vast experience in other trades. He is a talented commander, strategist, thief, as well as a born leader. Conan speaks many languages. Many a sheltered scholar would have been astonished at the Sumerian's linguistic abilities. For he had experienced many adventures where knowledge of a strange language had meant the difference between life and death, and can read and write. His very first appearance shows him busy writing. Golden laid writing table sat a man whose broad shoulders and sun brown skin seemed out of place among those luxuriant surroundings. In some stories, he's able to recognize, or even decipher, certain ancient or secret signs and writings. Such as when he uses the sign of Jebel Sag in Beyond the Black River. However, 
Howard never has him reading Stygian, although he can speak it. Another noticeable trait is his sense of humor, largely absent in the comics and movies. But very much a part of Howard's original vision of the character, particularly apparent in Zuthal of the Dusk, one fact that is often emphasized is that Conan is very difficult to defeat in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Conan needs only to have his back to the wall so that he cannot be surrounded, and then is capable of engaging and killing opponents by the score. This is seen in several stories, such as, Queen of the Black Coast, The Scarlet Citadel, and, A Witch Shall Be Born. Conan prefers to fight with a single sword and an open offhand, which he uses for punching and grappling. However, he is also skilled with shields, axes, spears, daggers, and many other weapons. Conan is not superhuman. Though, he did need the providential help of Zalata's wolf to defeat four Nemedian soldiers in the story The Hour of the Dragon. Some of his hardest victories have come from fighting single opponents, but ones of inhuman strength, one such as Thak, the ape-man from Rogues in the House. Conan is far from untouchable and has been captured several times, knocking himself out running into a wall while drunk after being betrayed, although he still slays the people initially sent to arrest him. A fall from a wounded horse, but never as a result of martial failings. One of Conan's skills is that of climbing. Cimmeria is a land of hills and cliffs, and its people are skilled at navigating them. Conan frequently astounds others with his abilities to climb sheer walls and cliffs. Conan is not greatly skilled at diplomacy or deception. However, his many years of combat experience have made him highly skilled at recognizing dissembling in others. He is especially skilled at reading body language, or in using it to miscommunicate his intentions. The very first Conan cinematic project was planned by Edward Summer. Summer envisioned a series of Conan movies, much like the James Bond franchise. He outlined six stories for this film series, but none were ever made. An original screenplay by Summer and Roy Thomas was written. But their lore-authentic screen story was never filmed. Instead the resulting film, Conan the Barbarian, was written by the unlikely pairing of Oliver Stone and John Milius. Their script had very little in common with Howard's original Conan tales, and was a complete reimagining of Conan's life. The plot of Conan the Barbarian begins with Conan being enslaved by the Vanir raiders of Thulsa Doom, a malevolent warlord who is responsible for the slaying of Conan's parents and the genocide of his people. Later, Thulsa Doom becomes a cult leader of a shamanistic religion that worships Set, a snake god. The vengeful Conan, the archer Subatai and the thief Valeria set out on a quest to rescue a princess held captive by Thulsa Doom. The film was directed by John Milius and produced by Dino De Laurentiis. The character of Conan was played by Arnold Schwarzenegger and was his breakthrough role as an actor. This film was followed by a less popular sequel, Conan the Destroyer in 1984. This sequel was a more typical fantasy genre film and was even less faithful to Howard's Conan stories. There were rumors in the late 1990s of a second sequel, King Conan, Crown of Iron, but Schwarzenegger's election in 2003 as governor of California ended this project. The film rights to Conan were acquired by Millennium Films in August 2007. Millennium plans to complete production on a new Conan movie in 2010, with the movie intended to be more faithful to Howard's original works than the earlier movies. The film titled Conan the Barbarian was released in 2011 with Marcus Nispel direct the reboot and starring Jason Momoa, Universal Pictures announced a direct sequel to the 1982 film titled The Legend of Conan with Schwarzenegger returning as Conan but Universal had dropped the project, although there was a possibility of a TV show. The story of the film was supposed to be set 30 years after the first. With some inspiration from Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven. An animated feature, Conan, Red Nails, based upon the story of the same name was being made, although it has since stalled and fallen into development hell.